In this video, we're going to work on a positive and negative bar chart here. And in this chart, you can see here we have changed the scale, putting it up because we want to center the zero line here and don't want to put this text down, but up would probably be more appealing. Next, we want to make sure it's color coordinated that if we are on, if the bar points up, in that case, it becomes a red color. And if it points down in a negative value, it becomes a green color. So let's start to explore how we can do this. In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewers' question, which is how to create a negative bar chart with a zero line in the center in Chart.js. And this question came from one of my other videos about how to hide grid lines in Chart.js. And if we scroll down here, you will see that this question came from Watanabe Yaske. So a special thank you to Yaske for asking the question. And this is what Yaske asked. Uh, maybe you could also be interested in to make a video about a bar chart with negative values now, right? And then eventually I ask for some more uh, information. And then this is what Yaska eventually answered. Uh, what it was here, imagine you have a bar chart, a vertical bars from the middle, zero to top, maximum value. And with this chart, you will also have the negative values, which goes basically in the opposite direction. So I assume here you just want a positive or negative bar chart. And then what I want to do is then probably, and this is the core focus, how we get the baseline or the uh, x-axis at the center instead of down at the bottom. So let's start to explore how we can do this. And I'm not sure if I'm understanding it good. So if I maybe misinterpreted your, uh, your question, just let me know and explain a bit more and I can always make a new video. So what we're going to do is we're going to build basically the chart so we need first our default code so we go here to charges 3com getting started you might notice this here for some reason my google chrome gives this weird error anyway copy all of this code here and once we copy this then i will paste this in here and once i did that i want to grab the title here above and i'll just replace this here with the latest title all right save this and then refresh and now we have a basic bar chart. So what we're going to do here is basically put some negative values in here. By default, it will eventually put it in the center, but I'm going to do, to do some adjustments that will make it a bit more appealing to view. So first of all, let's scroll down here. Let's put in some negative values. I'll just put a minus value here and here and there. So if I save this right now, we have now basically a type of bar, but I assume you want to do at least a little bit more. For example, this one we want to probably highlight a bit more, force it in a, in the position here, of course. And what I would like to do is move these to the top. That will make it just a bit more appealing to view. And finally, having the colors coordinated, meaning if it's a positive, or in this case, uh, based on your explanation, that if it would be, if it's up, it would be considered expenditure, and if it's a negative, it would be a saving. So there are, I guess this would be up would mean red, and this one would mean green in this case. So let's start to work with one part first is moving the scale in a new position. So in here in the scales, I'm going to say here the x scale, and I'm going to put a comma, and then we say your position, and then we put this on top. And by doing so, we move our scale now to the top or specifically the text itself. But what I do want is I want this, of course not here, I want this in here. So we're going to give this a nice highlighted line as well. So we clearly indicated that this is the middle point. So to do this, we go here in the Y axis and in the Y axis, we're going to put a comma and then we're going to say here the following. We can say your grid because we're going to put it, we're going to work within the grid structure of the scale of the y-axis because this is what we call the grid and what we're going to focus on is in the grid line so you might say why are we doing the y scale grid and not the x scale and the reason why is the y scale here is connected with these horizontal lines yes so pay attention the map this might sometimes become very confusing while the x scale has these um, for uh, vertical lines yes that's the right term vertical lines here so we want to focus basically if the grid line has a value equals to zero in that case we want to change this color so let's do that one here so in here we're going to say color then i'm going to grab here the context and the context is a 
is basically a, a parameter in our case and we're going to use here a callback function so that would mean that we can use here the arrow expression function in other words instead of typing in function we can use just the arrow which does exactly the same but just a shorter term of writing then what I want to do here first of all I want to say console.log and then grab the context above so we can see what this really means let's save this refresh and then of course you might see here the grid lines are not being drawn now don't worry about that there's a reason for that because right now we didn't have a return value because there's nothing being returned it's become blank however we get all these objects here and you can see one two three four five six seven eight that's supposed to match with this one one two three four five six seven eight there you are and if you wonder why this one here well the x scale also has a default line as well so that's the reason why this one's being shown anyway what i would like to do here is to click on one of these objects and you can see here the tick value and you can see it was a tick label which is zero and the matching value of that it also shows us the index and the index starts here so this is zero one two three which is correct and the value equals zero so what i want to do is if this equals zero give it a special color else we just give it a default color so what i'm going to do in here i'm going to put an enter and then i will say here the following I'm going to say a constant, and I'll just give it the zero line. And the zero line is what exactly? Well, we're going to grab here the context. And then what we want is eventually this. We can see here in the context, we go to ticks, then the value. So we want to get, well, if this is really the zero line, you can say maybe the tick line or the grid line. But we can just call it the zero line for now. The tick dot value. And what I want to do here eventually, say the following constant um, I guess here we can just say the bar color this will be this is basically this we're going to grab the zero line if the zero line equals strict zero in that case I would like to say a color I'm going to say here hashtag triple six which is the default color usually used in charge yet and if that is not the case so you do then we put in a colon then we say here hashtag triple c make sure that this is a string value and once we did that semicolon here and then what we can say here the following we're going to say here we're going to return the bar color and returning the bar color is basically returning this in this function basically and this is a callback so it's an array so before we even continue on because here right now if i just do this this will eventually lead to nothing and the reason, oh, it, apparently it does. Did I put in the function already here? Not yet. Apparently it's already in here. But what we could do is this. Just to make sure. Oh, sorry. No, that's fine. This is all fine. Because this is not even the bar color. This should be maybe the grid color. Sorry. I'm, we're, I'm getting ahead of myself. So this should be the grid color. So refresh. There we are. So the colors are working nicely. We get a nice darker line here that will highlight that specific line. So now what I want to do is, as well, the, the minimum and, and maximum, we want to set this just to make sure that here, this eventually stays positioned. So for this, it's very simple, I guess, is the minimum here will be minus 15. And of course, we could do with an array functionality, we could grab here the lowest value. In this case, I'll just keep it like that. And for max, as well, we can do max, we could be 25. So it's a solid one or we don't even need this then by default it would just get a value always you will always get the highest value no matter what and the minimum value will be set here on minus 50. all right the next thing what i want to do here is probably is the color coordination because that will be probably a part that is essential how can we highlight the colors if it's positive or negative so to do this and that's what i was almost thinking in my mind is to create here a function i'm going to create a function here we want to grab two colors we want to get the green color and the red color and just for quick sake here this is the green this is the red color and this one here is the green color so what i'm going to do here well i will just comment this out i'll say your background color colon and here we're going to say here bar color and this bar color is the function that we want and this function we're going to work with now so we're going to say a comma and what we're going to do here we have to say here this should be this value 
Okay, so we we'll pinpoint on this, and then here we can start working on it. So what I'm going to do here is the following. I'm going to say function here, and we say here bar color, and then here we're going to grab this, and maybe this is even not necessary. I realize we can skip that one because we need to push it within the array here. And what we really want to do is we want to compare the values in here. And if this would be a positive value, it must become red. And if it's a negative value, which we which would indicate a, a reduced amount of expenditure, and it's a saving, in that case, it becomes green. So how are we going to do this? Or how are we going to figure out this structure? So we're going to say here, return. And the return will be CVX. So that will be related to the chart itself. So we can grab here now the values within the chart itself so then what i want to do here just to make sure you understand what i'm saying console log ctx save that and refresh all right so now we get this here and then just to make sure that i have a console log here i'm going to remove that one save that refresh you can see here we return and we get all these extra numbers what we get here is basically as well the data value here you can see your data index and then we also have the index number, which is exactly the same. And we get here the values that we want. The y value is set here on 18, which is the starting point here. So this would mean negative. Let's go to the next one here. We should see here, oh, this is another 18. All right, let's go down here because I need to hover over it and then it will trigger. The others are just still effect. So here you can see here, this is now minus 12. So why it doesn't work in the beginning? Well. If you refresh, you can see there's a lot of loading being done first. And that loading, that's why it has an impact. But after that, it will work fine. After a second, you can see then we get the right value. And what I want to grab here is just basically the raw value. And this raw value will indicate if it's a positive or negative value. If it is a positive value, show color red. If it's a negative value, show color uh, green in this case. So what we're going to do now is basically this. We're going to get here this constant and let's say here this will be our standard standard value and the standard is just a zero so that's our comparison value and what we want to do here now is not a constant and then we can just say here um, um, I guess here maybe money or expenditure expenses let's say like expenses for now and what is the expenses well we can see here how to get this we need to go in here so that's basically the console log of CTX and from CTX we go, let's click on that, we have to go to the raw value here. So I'm going to say this, if I do here, just here dot raw, and let's close this out or comment out, we should be able to see something here. As you can see here, we are grabbing the value and if you hover over, you can start to see it being pinpointed. All right. So that's very useful because now we have this ctx.raw and all I want to do now is say the following. If the expenses equals, uh, let's see here, well this is ctx.raw, uh, what we can do here, maybe we can just say here, this could be the expenses, I realize. Then we can just say here, constant, and this can be maybe the color. So what we're going to do here is the following. Yes. So the color is based on an if statement that if our expenses is over the zero line, in that case, question mark, I would like to give it a specific color. If this is true, so what's the color then? It's red. So I'm going to grab the red color here. Go down here, put it in here. All right. And if that is not the case, I'll say a column, the following, or at least we're going to do another comparison. We will say here if the expenses is smaller or equal to zero line or negative, so it means we're saving some money. In that case, what I would like to do is give it a green color. So I'm going to grab here the green color here. That's number four. There you are. And if it can find nothing at all, in that case, I'll just say, give me a black color as a default value. Once we have this, what I want to do here is I want to say return. And what do I return? I return the color. All right, save this here. And then if I refresh, 
now you can see it starts to work nicely this is green this is um, red so what we could do as well is exactly the same for the border color for the border color if you would like to have the solid border we can just copy basically the function and just do exactly the same here or we could even make here I guess an RA that would be fine as well but that's all right I'll just skip that one uh, I'll just make this a border color just for the sake of it it's slightly easier for now and we're just going to say here will be just solid one and this will be solid one and this will be color but this will be border color so we're going to connect this with the function of border color border color here put in parentheses save this refresh and there we are so now we have this here we have this nicely set here as a negative bar so this is basically how to do it if you want to learn a bit more about grid lines maybe you're interested in about that because of uh, some other features you want to do with it in that case i would highly recommend here you can this basically focus on how you can change one color of it first thing what we did here but you can use some more tricks with that next if ever because i was not certain if this is exactly the question you had if you had your question somehow differently in mind or you had something else in mind let me know and i can uh, make a different type of video.